So, frame arms. These have always been considered the de facto alternative to Bandai's 1100 Gunpla offering of mecha model kits, Master Grade. Now, I've never really found this myself. I've always found them to be a little bit. Mm. But that was before they were revised with a brand new inner frame. Now, I will mention recently, very recently, I built the Variable Frame System 01 Garuda Gear Beluga, a kit that is very similar to Kotobukiya's Frame Arms kits, and it blew me away. It was rock solid, it looked awesome, and it was a very nice kit to handle, play around with, pose, and display. Also, I've been entirely in love with Kotobukiya's Hexagear line, especially the rock solid mecha kits known as the Bulk Arm. So that made me think, well, it's about time I actually gave Frame Arms another chance. The last kit I built was back in 2014, which was the Durga, and that was before they revised the inner frame. So if you're wondering which kits have been revised, it will say on the box or in the description or E2, like what we're seeing right here. So what I've got right here is the NSGX2, and I'm about to butcher this word, but I'll try my best. Hrelsvegr. Now, there is no denying this is an absolutely off-the-wall, crazy design that kind of reminds me a little bit of something between a Zone of the Enders design and the Wound Wart from the Gundam universe. So to kind of cut a long story short, do these kits, well, are they better than they were before? And honestly, I would say, hmm, yeah. But they're not without their issues. Issues that would all be solved with a bit of glue, honestly, or a bit of cement. Anyway, that's enough about an intro. Let's get right on into it. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. 2022 will be the 10th anniversary of my channel and this year I plan to improve my content and make it better than ever. And with some great tips and tricks I've learned off of Skillshare to tackle my biggest obstacles, that's lighting and photography, so far I've been moving closer and closer towards that goal. And right now, you can too. If you're looking to improve your own videos or to get started on your own YouTube journey, then YouTube Success Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD will give you everything you need to know and more on how to start a review YouTube channel the right way and make professional quality videos right out the gate. So what are you waiting for? Get started on your own content journey today with Skillshare and the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box or my code MechaGaikosu will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So jumping right into the build here, now, if you've never built a frame arms kit, they basically build like the name says, you build a frame and then you build the armor and arms. The box right here is about the size of a, well, an older master grade box, so there isn't a crazy amount of plastic in here, but I will mention, unlike Bandai's offerings, you do not get multicolor runners, so there is a lot of what I refer to as runner jumping, which means you need to go from runner to runner to runner to runner for individual parts because the color separation is spread across a lot of runners. I will also mention that Every color on the box is not represented, which is very Kotobukiya. We have no yellow in here at all, even though on the box we see some yellow on the kit. And there's a lot of detail like gold and greys that you will have to paint yourself. Assembly in here is very simple. I would say it's definitely not master grade level, but it's definitely higher than high grade. For example, the head consists of, if I recall correctly, maybe just five parts and five parts only. If you're curious as to what the frame looks like, it looks like this. It's very simple, very similar to what it used to look like. This kit does need to use the feet and the head of the actual model kit itself because the frame parts don't exist inside of the box and there is no actual mechanical or engineering aspects to the actual frame. It is just something to hold the armor parts on and is very plain to look at. However, once you actually do start building on all the parts, this is quite the looker of a kit. It's a very unique design and it is very eye-catching. But yeah, quite simple to build. I do recommend cementing everything that doesn't move because even though it is a little bit tighter than the older frames would have been, it still likes to fall apart quite a bit. But anyway, into the aesthetics. So jumping right on into the aesthetics with the full 360 degree spin and there's the Helsweger completed with a little bit of panel lining. I've done nothing else to it, and I will mention there is a sheet of decals in here as well. There are water slides that I didn't get the chance to try out. 
So yeah, straight build, just some panel lines. So when I was looking for a frame arms to take a look at, I wanted to go for something that came out reasonably recently. This came out in 2022, well this year, sometime earlier, but if you take a look at the runners, they're all labeled from 2012 and 2016. So the armor is old, the frame is new, and I think it's just the color combination or something in here that actually makes it a 2022 kit, but for the most part, everything is rehashed from before. For me, the most interesting aspects are the silhouette as well as the nice dose of clear parts we have inside of this kit. So the silhouette is very nice. It's got those big, almost rabbit-like legs with the thrusters in them, a narrow waist and cockpit area, and some big thrusters up on the shoulders. On top of that, then we've got all those clear parts up in the head, the blades around the back of the arms, all over the legs, spiking out through the armor of the thighs, on the feet, and that big blade round back. I'll also mention this is a transforming kit, so we will be seeing a bit of a flight form later on. Size-wise, this is 1100 scale, but it does not stand as tall as a Gundam model kit does. Beside a Master Grade Oryx 78 II and a Zaku there, you can see that it is a little bit on the short side, but it is not as short as a high grade. I'll also mention when you do zoom out a bit, giving this the shelf presence test, it does get a little bit lost. Now I'd put this down a little bit to its stature as well as the very busy design and the, I guess, not as iconic kind of look. But uh, yeah, this is something that definitely impresses up close, but from a distance, might get a bit lost in a collection. So now jumping into the accessories and here's everything that comes in the box with the Frame Arms kit itself. So in here, of course, the most obvious aspect is the pair of giant transforming scythes, but as well as those, we also have a couple of holster kind of segments for attaching onto the legs, for attaching the sides into. We've got this adapter for the flight form, and then we've got a whole bunch of hands. So that is six alternative ones, not including the two that are already attached, which were the widespread open ones. So a grand total of eight hands. So when it comes to the expressive hands we have in here, we've got a standard pair of widespread open hands, which are these ones right here as well as a pair of fists. Sculpt-wise, these definitely look decent. The thumb is separate to the rest of the hand while you're building it, so it does look nice, but I will mention you may want to cement that so it doesn't go AWOL. Swapping these is simple. You just disconnect them just like so. They're only attached by pegs, and then attach in the one that you want. As the hands articulation-wise, we do actually have a moving little segment in the wrist, which gets you quite a bit, so that is in every single one of the hands. So as for the last two pairs, we've got a standard pair of holding hands we'll take a look at a little bit later, because that's for using with the weapons, as well as these trigger finger holding hands. Now, I will mention that this particular kit does not come with any kind of long-range weaponry, but these are always usable with any of Kotobukiya's MSG sold separately weapons. So if you do want to grab yourself some guns for using with this kit, you've got the fingers for using with them. So now moving on to the main event in here, and that is this pair of sides, which I have to admit are ridiculous. These are huge. There is a 1-100 scale Oryx 78 II for comparison, so these are incredibly, incredibly big. So these do have a whole bunch of moving parts. This part, this part, and this part, these can all kind of pivot for multiple forms. So what you're seeing right here, first off, is the side form. So if you actually tilt this part forward and then tilt these two blade segments up, what we've got then is the axe form. And as you can see, this does actually look like an axe, so that is a nice design. Finally, the last version is you actually bring this part all the way forward like so, and then you bring these ones back around like this. And then for the last form, we actually just spin the top of it around just like so. The larger segment comes around to what is now the front. These drop out to the back like so, like this, for using this as the bladed edge, and this then is the blade form. So three forms, one side, actually, two sides, so this thing has, well, a lot of damage dealing potential, but I'm already having some structural issues with this guy, so I'm wondering how well it'll be able to hold them up. Let's find out. So attaching these into the hands is super simple, you just slide them down into the hands like so, or you could clip the fingers over whichever you like. These hold on very, very well, and clamp down onto the shafts the way you want them to. However, I will mention, the minute I started trying to get these onto the actual mecha itself, that's when things started to fall apart, quite literally. So probably one of the biggest issues I've always had with the Frame Arms kits, and it's definitely showing itself right here as well, is the kind of ball joint attachment the shoulder joints have. These are kind of almost like top-loading ball and socket, as in the ball goes in from the top. 
Any little bit of movement always tends to work the ball out little bit by little bit by little bit, and eventually they just end up popping. And this happens over and over and over again. On top of that, this already somewhat unstable kit is now entirely front heavy with these attached. Now there's multiple things you can do to actually deal with the fact that this is front heavy. You can just try and lean it back a little bit until it counterbalances a little bit. You can actually make it prop its weapon up kind of like touching the ground like some kind of, well, scythe being held in the hand, touching the ground, almost like a tripod leg to hold it up. Or you can do what I'm doing right here and pop it up on an action base. Now, posing this isn't the simplest thing around because every little part on this is to some degree kind of janky and loose. The engineering on these kits isn't really designed to work like, say, Gunpla or an action figure or anything like that. It's literally just parts being held together by pegs and stuff, just barely. It's all about the look, really. But once you actually do get them attached, this doesn't seem to be having any kind of issues with dropping these heavy weapons at all, which is good. And at the end of the day, it looks absolutely phenomenal in this pose. So what can I say? It's a case of do you like a kit that looks good in a pose or do you like a kit that you can pose around all of the time? Because if you just want a kit in a pose that looks kick ass, you'll get that right here. So yeah, compared to other frame arms I've taken a look at before, this isn't so bad. I've tried actually posing these while flipping them between the various different forms and, you know, it holds together pretty okay. So I do think the actual new frame that this kit has is a little bit more robust than what we would have seen before. At least it feels like it's holding together a little better and it really does support those weapons perfectly. Impressive. So the last couple of accessories we have in here are these. So these are kind of like a little attachment point for attaching those weapons onto when they are not in use. You have a couple of moving parts and this just attaches using this segment here right into this little hole on this side of the leg. So it just pops in like so. And yeah, this is probably the worst offender for falling off right here. Just a couple of pegs holding it on. I recommend cementing that on just for your sanity. So yeah, according to the instructions, attaching this here weapon onto this is actually for when it's in its flight form, but I'm curious as to if it can store it in its non-flight form too. So from what I can see, it seems to be in this position right here. We have a peg right here, which seems to attach into it. And this attaches in this way, it seems. So let's try and plug that in there. And there we go. That's what it would look like stored onto the side of the leg. Uh, not very portable. Actually, extremely not portable anyway. Articulation time. So now jumping into the articulation, and for the most part, the structural stability on this is okay when you just leave it as is, but the minute you start moving things, that's when you'll get some issues. So the engineering on this isn't really, well, it doesn't feel designed to actually pose it. It feels like more to build it in a position more than actually move it around. It's a bit jank and grabbing some parts can easily knock off other parts if you try to, well, do anything really. You gotta be careful with it. So starting off of the head, first off we've got this little bit of a segment here that can swing back and forward, that right there, so that's it all the way forward, all the way back. The neck itself is just a ball joint, so you've got down and up and side to side, that is it. The shoulder right here is that top mounted, Jesus Christ, woo! Okay, yeah. The shoulder is that top mounted ball joint that is very likely to pop. It gives you a forward and back, it just went again. You've got forward and back, hold it in there when you're moving it up and down. We've got it. Let's take it element by element. So yeah, when it's attached into the shoulder, we do have this segment here, which allows the arm to move up and down, as well as move outwards from the body like so. This shoulder segment here is attached via this side to side moving segment. This can also pivot forward and back ever so slightly. I actually can move all the way to the front. And I assume that is part of the transformation. We do have the full upper arm spin and that part that just fell off. Well, a lot of this kit suffers from one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to model kits. And that is this terrible design element. The peg that's meant to go in there is meant to hold on via pressure. But this is two segments, as you can see right there. So if you do not cement these together permanently, well, any kind of pressure will make these two parts start splitting and then it just instantly loosens and falls off. So once again, not really designed to be straight built this. Anyway, that fin there can rotate out of the way of the body when you need it to. 
The bend at the elbow is just that right there, so about a right angle. This bit here does not move, and as we saw before with the wrist, it can rotate just like so, as well as flex and extend on that little joint in the wrist. So moving down now to the ab crunch, make sure not to use this for leverage because it doesn't actually hold together at all. So there we go. There it is all the way to the front and to the back. So that is quite a decent ab crunch. We have rotation in there as well. Just make sure the blade round back is out of the way. And speaking of which, this has two points of articulation. So you can point it all the way down and up and bring it up and down at this point as well. So moving on to the kicks now, and there's the kick all the way up to the front. We do have a fixed joint for the hip. That bit fucking, oh my God. Okay, anything that falls off from here on out, I'm leaving off, I'm going mad. Anyway, there it is then out to the back. So not too bad at all. And then we finally have the splits, 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 spliffs, just like that. You can rotate the leg then at the upper thigh like so. I'm gonna pop this off so we can see what we have. I just lost something else there. I heard it falling away. This right here isn't the greatest design for a knee. We've got this segment here and then the knee bends down just like so. So once again, another right angle. Now inside of there, there is a double jointed leg like I guess what we can see on this here, classic frame arms frame. So there should be a double jointed knee just like so inside of there but this little segment that keeps falling off is what is blocking this second knee joint so you could get a lot more if it wasn't for that being on there but that does be on there this whole segment can lift up and out ever so slightly probably to adjust the angle of the thruster down at the ankle which is probably one of my favorite joints we have this part here which allows this to pivot forward and back we have a full rotation there too. We have a side to side pivot and we also do have a bit of a toe bend here with this nice little effect part. So so as for to the front, it's about to there until the armor starts to clash. Then we probably get a whole bunch to the back. Yeah, a whole bunch to the back. And then the side to side pivot is pretty damn good as well. So the biggest issue in here is just armor clashing and just some general bad engineering. So I'm gonna take the Helsvetter right here and I'm gonna get it into the usual pose I put things in for the articulation at the end. And I'm gonna do this in real time as opposed to speeding it up like I usually do because I don't expect much to be left of it. I'm gonna go as carefully as I can and try not to let it fragment into a thousand pieces. But let's just see how it turns out. So that's all we get for the knee bend. Let's get it into that bit of a lunge, kick up this arm, I decapitated it by accident. There we go. That arm is falling off. I didn't mean for that to happen either. Yeah, this kit, or the, well, that, see? Yeah, these kits, straight built, they definitely are for display only, not really for play. And even still, you're gonna have to do a lot just to make sure these aren't an absolute plastic hand grenade. So anyway, jumping on to the transformation, and as usual, I'm going to be showing what the transformed form looks like first. And I have to say, I am very, very impressed by this. This looks really cool, and the layout of everything just works so well. Now, I will mention from the front, direct on front perspective, the whole core area of this particular flight form does look a little bit on the blocky side. But from every other angle, this does look quite aerodynamic and really cool. That little sword, or should I say large sword tail we had around back, has now become the nose of this particular flight form. These sides have become the wings, and the body in general has compressed into itself, hiding the robot form for the most part. We can see the head right there in the front, but the little segment around back has flipped forward, and on the whole this worked out quite well, and for something that had a really awkward kind of articulation and, well, posing experience, this wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it'd be. Let's talk about how it was done. So like I mentioned, this is pretty simple for the most part, but this does fall apart a lot. So I do recommend taking the parts apart while actually doing what you need to do with it. First off, you just move the shoulders back, bring those thrusters on the shoulders forward, flip them around until they're at this angle with the arm. Then you need to straighten out the arms, the effect parts in the back, those actually line up and lock the arm very nicely in a straight line. 
You then pop this little segment up on the backpack. This has some pegs on it for holding the arms into position. And to do that, you actually lift them up and flip them back. But the shoulder joints are so weak on this, I actually just did the transformation while they weren't attached and then just attached them into the shoulder and onto the pegs. And this just made life a whole lot easier. Next up then, we've got two little segments on the front of the torso. You just flip up like so. The armor that was around the back of the head swings out in front of the head like this. Next up, you take that tail sword and flip it all the way around from the back. We also have a little bit of a flip out segment that makes this fit ever so perfectly over the waist unit. So this just fits in very nice. Then you swing the whole leg segment up like so, bringing the actual waist unit up in front of the torso. Then we grab that little adapter that we had way back when in the accessories part and you just plug that into the bottom and this has two different functions. It is also a base adapter as well as an adapter that will hold both of the legs up and aligned so they don't end up going crooked on you when it's transformed. That's cool. Next up we do have the transformation of the legs. Once again I did take them off to make this easier. You can press down the big front armor that was over the upper thigh, bring the armor around back that was always being a pain in the ass throughout the review, you actually click that forward and everything becomes nice and flush. The foot then kicks back, you can extend the toes and then you pivot them in the way just like this. Actually not just like this, I did realize that was the wrong pivot, you actually pivot in the middle of the foot, not at the ankle. When you actually swing the legs up and back now you're able to attach them into that little adapter we just attached onto the kit and like I mentioned this will hold the legs in position just like the arms are held in position with that little backpack part. Rock solid. Lastly then you need to attach the little holsters onto the legs if you didn't have them attached already. They can then flip out this little clear segment up front which is really handy. It does lock these upright when they are actually put up in position. Then you swing back the little grabby part that holds onto the sides bring it all up and together like this, and then you can attach these scythes on. You do have to transform them into the fourth scythe form, which is the wing mode. And I do recommend just attaching the handle onto the unit first, and then the business end of the scythe onto that, because attaching it all on in one go is pretty difficult. But there we go. Like I mentioned, we do have an attachment point to stick this onto an action base in its flight form. And I have to say, I am impressed by the flight form. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and when I was going into this, I had two questions myself about this particular kit. One, is it a good kit? I guess that's a simple question. And the second one is, does the revamped Frame Arms frame actually make this a better kit than the Frame Arms kits, well, used to be? So to answer the first question, this is definitely a very good kit. I enjoyed it a lot. Its biggest downfall, of course, is the fact that it doesn't hold together that great, but that's not that big of a deal. If you like to play around with your kits a lot, like if you've got some gun plan, you love to throw it in a whole bunch of poses, that isn't really as applicable here, especially the out of box build. With a bit of modification, maybe, I couldn't tell you. As for the second question, does the new frame actually, well, revolutionize frame arms and the answer to that I feel is no. This is still the same frame arms experience but a teeny little bit tighter. Besides that though it keeps falling apart in the exact same way. So I have to say straight away you need to cement pretty much everything in this kit that does not move. And anything that does move you might as well tighten that up with a little bit of paint, top coat, super glue, whatever you like to use. But out of box this will not be the greatest experience. But as for the other aspects, aesthetically it looks astounding. It is missing some details, some colors, so you will need to paint them. When it comes to the accessories, and here we've got two massive transforming sides that to me is awesome, you still have the whole line of Kotobukiya's MSG parts to use with it too, if you want to go out and get some of those. When it comes to the articulation and the stability out of box that is its weakest aspect entirely, but the transformation here surprisingly works and works well. And when it is in its flight form, it's locked into position and it is not going to fall apart. So that to me is one of the most impressive aspects. So yeah, absolutely awesome looking kit, will need some work to be perfect, but still out of box, an enjoyable experience, especially if it's just for display. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And as always, I'll see you next time.